all right guys welcome back so like i said last week this video is going to be a little different um i've kind of been thinking about a different camping vehicle for a while now the suburban's done me really well it's never left me stranded it goes great sleep comfortably great machine but i can't sit up in the back and it's just not quite as roomy so i've been kind of thinking about a van well the thing with vans are they're always two-wheel drive and if you get one that's four-wheel drive they're really expensive so not super budget friendly for a off-road capable van so then i kind of lean towards a truck with a camper top because i know that's a good option so i've been kind of looking for a little while but trucks are outrageous here like i'm sure they are everywhere in the country um but I happened to come across one so went and looked at it ran good shifted great all good to go super cheap bought that and needed a camper top so that's where this part of the story comes in so tune in for this part and i'll be right back with you all right guys all right, you see me i uh, don't have my camera so i'm trying to do this with my phone i've not done that in a long time so this is probably going to turn out terrible i can't even tell if i can see myself or not but we're in the new truck we're heading to Pennsylvania today to get a camper talk for it. Just fueling up, still snowing. I think all of West Virginia, I heard, if I'm not mistaken, is in a state of emergency. So, but the roads are clear. I mean, I don't know if it was that bad or dangerous or anything. I wouldn't even mess with it. But roads aren't bad at all. But there's definitely quite a few good inches of snow on the ground. We're supposed to get a little more. So. The GPS says an hour and 18 minutes. I think it's going to take a little longer because people are going pretty slow. But uh, yeah, this is going to be kind of the first like farther trip in the truck. We're going to see how that does. Because as of right now, I've only had like 20, 25 minutes one way. So, when we're fueling, we get on the road. According to the GPS, we have arrived if I can find the place. Okay, so that's how that went. Nice smooth trip. Uh, definitely some snow. Roads weren't amazing the whole time, still. Truck handled it great. Um, pretty pleased with that. I don't even remember how far it was mile-wise, but it was a good bit of running. And I didn't even use a quarter tank of gas. So for that, pretty happy. Um, so now, I'll just give you a little tour of the truck so you know what I'm even talking about. So what we have here is a 2013 Ford F-150. Now as you can tell by the numbers on the side, well, mostly tell anyways, this was an old uh, company truck for a local company. It was like their foreman's truck. Now, I had my doubts at first about company trucks because I'm sure like everybody, you know, I've seen how people treat company trucks sometimes. So I was skeptical. But they gave me a folder, the thick, full of the service records. All the oil changes, all the light bulb changes, all the tire rotations, all the fluid top-offs. Uh, they just did a $1,600 rack and pinion steering in it. So it made me feel a lot better. Um, plus, I mean, if you know how you know some people are with their jobs, they don't want to drive around on a piece of junk so something goes wrong they have it fixed keep up with it so yeah anyway 2013 5.0 liter v8 automatic four-wheel drive big thing for me is the bed because if you know anything about these fords a lot of them were the shorter beds like five foot seven beds or something like that well i'm like six one it's gonna do me no good so as soon as i saw eight foot bed sold on that um what else plastic you know it's not great here kind of not a big deal get that stuff off amazon ebay does have a little rust that's why they sold it wouldn't pass inspection in west virginia but i can fix that in the spring don't care too much about that rest of the body pretty good even has pretty fair tires on it 
but they're definitely not aggressive for me not enough anyway so i uh definitely am looking to upgrade tires right off the bat what else all oh, right here grill's kind of broken not a big deal don't really care but overall really decent truck and i got it for two thousand bucks now depending on where you're at two thousand dollars is not going to buy you a very good running driving four-wheel drive truck especially on a 2013 now it does have higher miles 193,000, i think so i'm pretty close to 200 but like i said no check engine lights no weird noises starts right up runs perfect shifts perfect um it, you would never know it had 193 if you didn't read it like the interior is not even that bad like usually these company trucks get like kind of torn seats not torn not damaged there that's broken but I, mean, it's, I don't care about that but it has the like little back doors that open got like a few little supplies in there but i want to build a shelf i think and like store stuff in here that i don't want in the bed but yeah doors all work windows all work cruise heat air conditioning all that so if this thing lasts me like a year i'm gonna say pretty fair deal now the camper top i knew would be a little tricky to find because like i said not many eight foot bed f-150s but i happen to look on there on my marketplace that is and guy says i have one off of my 21 f-150 and it was also on a 2008 f-150 for 350 or best offer well around here that's a really good deal on a camper top because around here even used ones are like a thousand at least sometimes you'll find them like six five six eight hundred bucks but not very often and it's also a leer so it's like a brand like a name brand type of deal so yeah pretty pleased with that uh it doesn't fit exactly right so we kind of negotiated on the price he said shoot me an offer so we ended up at 265 i thought super fair deal on an eight foot long fiberglass camper top especially the high rise top because that's what i wanted because i want to be able to sit up in there because in my suburban i'm like hunched way down to even get it out of bed so the biggest thing with the fitment is right here you can see that doesn't quite hug the cab perfectly kind of you know kind of comes in too far uh he said it fit a little bit janky on his 21 so i'm guessing this is more of like 08 style camper top but still not a deal breaker all glass is good the sliders work got a wire in the third brake light but yeah pretty solid deal i thought for 265 so i'm all about budget some of you guys know that so at 2000 for the truck at 265 for the camper top i don't think 2265 bucks is a bad start because i've already got all the supplies to actually camp like i'm just going to take my bed out of the suburban slip it right in there you know it should be a fairly easy like transition the only thing is is there's no insulation in here now i stayed very warm in the suburban even with all the windows in it so i don't know how it's going to go in here but while it's empty i think what i'm going to do is put down a layer of insulation on the floor and then a layer of plywood and some kind of carpet on top of that a rug or something i looked into those like pre-molded bed rugs you can get in these I'm not going to do that not unless i find one used they are way more outrageous than i expected but anyway that's kind of the rundown of the new uh camping rig we'll call it um should be in it next week i'm hoping kind of spending this week getting you guys a video kind of give you a scoop of the new outfit here and uh yeah hopefully start setting it up so now i think uh it's gotta go to the hardware store so yeah hopefully next time you see me uh we're making some progress stay tuned
right, so what we've got going so far is just cutting it to fit. I didn't realize that there's a lot of little like indentions and waves and I'm just kind of trimming it, getting the fit back in here like I want it to. Take this, lay it on top of the plywood, template, cut that, fit right in. Had to go around, cover some holes with like this chrome tape and some duct tape, kind of seal that off, good enough for now. Got these little holes here. So now I'm gonna cut this piece to fit, cut some plywood, screw it down, good to go. All right, you can see, got this side cut. Lined up fairly decent, nice and tight, pretty much to the edge. And these are four by eight pieces, got a little lift there, but that'll be fine. So uh, yeah, pretty happy with that. I know there's probably better ways to do this. I originally thought about getting that thin like bubble insulation and layering that down, but it's like 50 bucks a roll for a big enough roll to do this. And these were 10 bucks a piece. So now I just got to transfer this onto a piece of wood, cut the wood, get it down here, screw it down, floor, done enough for me. I think it uh, is gonna be a huge improvement, but we're out of light, so I'm gonna have to, take back off in the morning. All right, got that piece fitting pretty good. Pretty happy with that. Nice and tight all the way down. And now let's get this side cut. first try I just came in and out of there like seven times trimming little pieces along the way because with these beds kind of roll up I had to make the plywood just a little bit longer you know what I mean because the foam was at the bottom of the roll so the top if I cut it exactly would have left more of a gap here so pretty tight all the way around I think what I might do is pick the wood back up and take that chrome tape and kind of go off the foam onto the bed all the way around just kind of make like a barrier Kind of insulate a little more. Then put the wood down. Screw the wood down. I'm going to carpet this. So maybe I may even take that chrome tape and go around this too. From the wood up onto the bed. Just to kind of keep more air and draft and coldness down. Alright. Screw time. Alright. Had to make a quick run to the uh, hardware store. Get some screws. Got self tapping that way I can go through the wood into the metal, hold everything down nice and tight. Also, ran out of duct tape, so I had to resort to some masking tape. So, we're gonna see what this gorilla tape's all about. I don't know that it's gonna do much, but I'm gonna try it. So, now I'm just gonna screw everything down and then put another layer to seal around the edge of the wood like I did the uh, insulation. Also, found a rug, I'm gonna cut that to fit, and I think that'll be about it for the floor. All screwed down, all taped around the seam. That monkey tape is way better than regular duct tape, that's for sure. Actually kind of stuck a little bit. So now I'm just gonna cut the carpet to fit. I think the floor's about done finally. All right, pretty dark now, but using the fine light, you can kind of see that, uh, I can see the tape there. I got the wood all taped off around the edges. And this started off as a six foot by eight foot, just rolled like little pre-made rug thing from Lowe's. So I just rolled it out and then kind of scooted it to one side, kind of tight that way. So I was only trimming a little bit and then leave like, you know, the majority of the slack on this end. So I got like bigger pieces because I knew I'd want like some scrap like for patches or if I wanted to try to patching up the sides maybe. I don't know, I'm not really sure what the plan is for that yet, but that's insulation down, wood down, carpet down. I'm glad I did this behind Walmart because I forgot 
um, spray adhesive to kind of hold this stuff down. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna go back in and get that. So I'm glad I did it here. So I'm gonna run back in Walmart, get a can of spray adhesive, flatten that all out as flat and smooth as I can get it. Glue that down, let that sit, should be good. Like the headliner adhesive probably, if you guys have ever used that in a spray can. Uh, that should do the trick for that, I think. I wish the camper top would have been carpeted on the inside. It's not. I don't know if you can buy them for them. Probably. Probably expensive. I don't know. But I'm happy with that progress so far. Now, I could literally glue the carpet down, throw the bed in there, and I can go camp out of it. Like that. That should help that out a lot as far as, like, insulation and temperature inside the camper top. Um, I'm going to put a breakdown of what I've spent so far on this entire setup. I'll put that right here. To give you guys an idea. And this is like an ongoing project. This is not done by any means. So stay tuned for future videos on the truck build because I got some plans, ideas, thoughts, you know, let me know what you guys think. What should I do? What did I do wrong? I'm, I'm not a carpenter. I'm not. So I'm sure somebody out there could have thought a better way to do that floor, but I was just trying to be kind of quickish and easy-ish. You know, e easy-ish. Uh, that's not a word. But uh, yeah, just easy, cheap, insulated, definitely a budget build. I want to do this and show you guys that you don't have to go spend an insane amount of money to go camping and be comfortable and have fun, all right? So, budget build. Stay tuned for the future videos. Hopefully next week we're just doing some camping on it. We're going to see how this thing does. Uh, yeah, a lot of rambling this video, I know. But, a lot to talk about. So, I'm going to stop rambling now. End it here. Definitely thanks for tagging along, watching this whole video. Because I don't know how long it's going to be. Probably longer than I want. Uh, yeah, tune in next week. We'll probably get some more setting up. And then, like I said, hopefully go use it. Uh, but for now, thanks for watching.